Okay, now I'm going to go into a little more detailed look at the uh, motherboard. Uh, for those of you that are thinking maybe buying it, you know, it's $600, so it's a big chunk of change. So let's go over some of it here. Uh, we'll start at the bottom here. Let's see. Looks to me like here's the PC speaker, you know, for when you post, it'll beep at you. And there may be postcodes involved, I'm not 100% certain. So going over to, it'd be your left, here's the reset button. It's actually a reset button, you can reset the board. Uh, you know, with this board being so big, a lot of people may build it outside of a case. And so these are, these are convenient. This is a reset and a power button. And then there's LEDs in these as well. In the reset button will be the hard drive activity, and inside the power button will be the uh, power light. Next to it, you have a CMOS clear button. So if you do some overclock and it doesn't work and you need to help at the post, you just push that down and it resets your uh, BIOS settings. Here's some fan header connections. They are three pin, and they're probably controlled from the BIOS. Next here are some internal. USB 2.0 header. So if the case you're putting it in has USBs on the front of the case, you hook them in here. You then have the post LED codes. Uh, when you turn your computer on, it'll go through a bunch of numbers. And if it hangs for any reason, there'll be a number in this window. And you can use that to determine using your uh, manual that came with the motherboard what's got you, whether it be your memory or uh, graphics card not showing up or something. Okay, moving over to your left more, here is the front panel header, which of course has your hard drive LED, which is the yellow, the power LED, which is the green, the power switch is the red, and the reset button is the blue. And then moving over further, this is where the ECP, that piece that did not come with it that they will ship later, that connects there. Then you have a BIOS select switch, which I didn't know it had. So you can change BIOS. So if you, the reason that's important is, let's say I flash my BIOS, and for whatever reason the BIOS doesn't take. Normally you can brick a motherboard; it won't be worth anything. You've got to send it in. But this will allow you to recover the BIOS by going to a separate BIOS, and then getting it to post, and then redoing the BIOS again on the one that you failed. So that's that is an excellent feature there. Okay, moving up a little bit. These are the serial ATA ports. Now you'll notice they're different colors. The red is going to be the new serial ATA 3.0, which is the 6 gigabits per second slots. And then all the rest of the black are the normal serial ATA 2.0. So that's very helpful. Uh, I have a uh, crucial C300 SSD that I've not been able to put or connect to a serial uh, ATA 3.0 yet, and so I will get to test that with this board. You can believe that they have an IDE connection here. So those of you that are still using IDE, which I can't imagine if you're going to buy this motherboard, you're going to use IDE. You have that available to you. Here's your 24 ATX uh, power. And above here is the PCI Express disabling slots, which I talked about on uh, just a little earlier. You move this pin over, and it will disable this slot. The next one will disable this slot, and it goes on down. So that's for troubleshooting. If it's, and it's very handy if you're using water coins. You have another fan header, and then you have the e, what's called the EVGA Easy Voltage connectors. And so, if you see those little contact patches there, you can actually take a voltmeter and place it on those spots, and it will uh, tell you the voltage for different items such as your PLL voltage, your CPU voltage, by going down through there. You have more fan headers. This one actually is a three pin, you know, a normal three pin header. It also looks like it has a PWM, a four pin header as well. That's if you're using air cooling for this CPU, you would plug it in there. Then you have an optional six pin PCI Express for CPU that gives you extra power. Oh, I'm not even on the screen here. <laughs> if you go up, then you got your uh, six pin PCI Express connection that gives you extra power to your to this CPU right there. And then you have your 8 volt uh, pin or your 8 pin 12 volt power, which is your primary extra power for the CPU. You have to hook this one up. This one is optional. Okay, going across the top right here is the CPU enable and disable. So I guess 
if you only are using your board, I don't know if you can see that there, and you're only going to populate one slot, you can enable or disable either of these two so you can run this board with actually only one Xeon processor, although it does have to be a Xeon processor, and so you can disable them there. Going across the top, there's your dim slots again. Here's another four pin PWM fan header for this if you're using air cooling. And then here's your 12 volt, eight pin power for this that you have to use. Then your optional six pin PCI Express power for this for overclocking. And let me see here. What is this? That is a six pin required for multi GPU. So you have to plug this up if you use, if you read on it, it says required six pin connector required for multi GPU. So you have to use that even though it has a uh, cover on it. Okay. You have some, this is optional floppy power connection. And I'm looking, did I miss anything else? No, I think that, that about gets it. So let's go ahead to the uh, to the import or the input output backplate. Okay, now moving to the import the input output bracket on the back. Let's go over what we got here. Here we have our old trusty PS2 keyboard connection, which I don't know of anyone who uses that anymore. Most people have USB keyboards. You have two USB 2.0 connections, and then next to it is a red it is a external reset CMOS button, which is convenient, especially if the motherboard is going to be in a case. Right here is an EVGA specific connection. It's for their EVGA EVBot, which is an external handheld device that you can use to overclock the computer on the fly. I've not tried it yet, but I'll end up getting it, I'm sure, and try and see how it works. I've, I've seen some reviews on it. It's supposed to be pretty good. Next to that is your... Uh, that is going to be your USB 3.0 connections on the back of the computer. So you actually have two uh, USB 3.0 connections uh, for newer devices that use that. You then have some external serial ATA connections. You have two gigabit controllers or connections and you have a total of four USB 2.0 connections underneath those. And then you have the, uh, I think this is 8.1 audio, I'd have to look to be specific. Uh, probably in next videos I'll look into that and see if that's, but I, it may be 5.1, 6.1, or 8.1, but I was thinking it was going to be 8.1. So there is a coverage of the back of the board.